This lecture is by Dr. Alok Kumar Gupta. This is the sixth lecture of the lecture series on Plato, which I am going to deliver today. And in this lecture, the topic that I am going to cover is the individual and the state according to Plato's Republic. Till the last lecture, you must have noticed that uh, I have mentioned about the first book and half of the second book in which Plato has refuted the three prima facie theories which were existing in those days Athens and uh, rest of the Greek world. Now, after refuting Glaucon's theory of justice, Plato proposes that let us build a state in the realm of ideas which would be the perfect state and uh, why he is doing so? He explains it through his theory of large letters. He says that justice is present both in individual as well as in the state. In individual, it is in the micro form, whereas in the state, it is in macro form. So the question which arose right in the beginning at Sefla's house when the discussion was taking place, that who is a just individual? So now Plato proposes, after refuting three theories, three existing theories of those days, that just in, if we wish to understand who is a just individual, let us first discover when justice would prevail in the state. So for this, he builds the theory of large letters. So in, pre, in, in the successive slides, I am going to explain what is his theory of large letters. Plato's statement is, the state is the individual writ large, which means a state is the macrocosm of the microcosm individual, which means a state is the bigger form of the individual. Or you can say individual is the prototype of the state. So a state basically this, this statement means it this statement means that a state is the individual written in large letters. The second statement over here says, must we not acknowledge, I said, that in each of us there are the same principles and habits which are in the state. Which means, Socrates has posed this statement before Glaucon and Adimantus that must we not acknowledge, I said, Socrates says, that in each of us, which means in each individual, there same are the principles, principles and habits which exist in the state. So, what he means to say by this statement is that a state is the individual written in large letter. Or you can say individual is the prototype of a state or individual is the microcosm, whereas a state is the macrocosm. These are the different terminologies which have been used by different scholars in different commentaries. So, Socrates further says, we think of justice as a quality that may exist in whole community as well as in an individual and the community is the bigger of the two. Possible then, we may find justice there in larger proportions, easier to make out. So I suggest that we should begin inquiring what justice means in a state. So once he establishes this uh, statement that a state is the individual writ large, he means to say that justice is present in both individual as well as the state. But in a state, it is, in the, it is present in the larger form. So, if we have to locate a particular letter written in a smaller font on a blackboard or a whiteboard and the same letter A is written in a bigger form, a bigger font, then obviously we will try to discover the letter by looking first at the 
larger font size. So basic meaning of uh, the theory of large letters is this or whatever Socrates is saying is this. So this analogy between individual and state uh, is being explained through the theory of large letters by Plato. So Plato, while constructing the ideal state, draws a clear analogy between individual and the state. And the state, he says, possesses the same characteristics which the individual possesses. And Barker's comment is that it is no physical analogy. Means it is not the physical representation of state rather it is the theoretical or philosophical representation of is or state is the theoretical or philosophical representation of individual so one should not misunderstand it or misinterpret it to mean that plato is try, trying to draw some sort of physical analogy no it is not a parallel of the state and the human body such as hops for instance for instance draws in the Leviathan or Spencer in the principles of sociology. They have tried to draw a physical analogy between the state and the individual in their creations, but not Plato. So it is a spiritual parallel. It is a parallel between the souls of the individual, whether acting as a whole or in separated elements, and the state as, ex as expressed in the collective mirror or in that of its separate classes. So for Plato, state is the individual writ large. You may, may get a question simply stating this statement that state, quote unquote, state is the individual writ large and explain. So this is how you have to explain the meaning of this statement. That it is a spiritual parallel and not a physical parallel that, that Plato has tried to equate state and individual. So theory of large letter argues that in order to understand individual justice, it is better to understand social justice as social justice is more recognizable, more visible and is of larger size. So Plato makes it clear stating his theory of large letters. He emphasizes the fact that there are two copies of the same manuscript, one in very small minute letters and other in big and large letters. Naturally, everybody would like to read first the copy with large letters as it is more visible than the other. This is what I was trying to explain when I gave you the example of A written in a smaller font size and written in bigger font size. So everybody will try to know about A, the letter, from the bigger font size first. So this is what is the meaning of this statement. So justice which exists both in state and the individual can be better understood in the state where it exists in a much larger size than in the individual. So what it means is that once we are able to decipher, recognize, understand, comprehend how and under what conditions, in what manner justice prevails in a state, we will automatically end up convinced when we can say justice prevails in an individual or who is a just individual. So, method of large letters is that amounts to solving deeper mysteries with the help of more easily understandable mysteries of similar kind and thus discovers and defines justice with the help of his ideal state. So Plato proposes to consider justice first as it exists in the state in its broadest form. This is a statement by Plato wherein he says, states do not come out of an oak or a rock but from the minds of men that dwell therein. So sometimes this statement also could be there in one of the question which is which belongs to republic and then there would be a need for explaining it so this is how you should proceed with the explanation the individual mind or soul 
according to Plato, is divided into three elements, reason, spirit and appetite. This concept of Plato is, has been drawn from Pythagoras. And he says the lowest element in human soul is appetite and the highest is reason. Appetite is, the, is an irrational element which the state must possess. This question can be answered by metaphysics. So, uh, how appetite is an ir irrational element which should be or which must be there in the state? He says that this is something that belongs to the world of metaphysics as a branch of philosophy. But here, what one needs to understand that human mind or soul is divided into three elements, reason, spirit and appetite. And appetite is the lowest element among these three. And it is considered to be irrational element. Whereas reason and spirit are considered to be rational elements. So appetite denotes desire, hunger, love, thrust and other rudimentary instincts. Reason is the rational element in human soul with its main function to think and to know and it is the sovereign in human mind. So he, I mean Plato has accorded highest place or place of primacy to the element of reason calling it a rational element and in between the, ras the reason and appetite there is the element of spirit and this element of spirit denotes courage or the sense of honor or chivalry. Its main function is to inspire man for battle. This element is closer to reason than to appetite. This is a remarkable thing that one should keep in mind. Thus the element of spirit according to Plato is closer to reason than to appetite and it works as the lieutenant to the reason in human soul. So this triplicity of human soul is the foundation of much of the republic. I mean everything starts from here. The state being product of human mind and also resembling it is also divided into three classes which represent correspondingly the three elements in human soul. So uh, what it means to say is that the state is the product of human mind. So this product that is a state also resembles human mind and since human mind consists of three elements so a state also consists of three classes. The first one is the perfect guardians, second one the auxiliaries and third the peasants. Now mind it in his book Republic Plato considers the class of guardians or the rulers as well as the auxiliaries as guardians. But here, or you know, I mean interchangeably he writes or he addresses the rulers as the perfect guardians. But auxiliaries also he mentions as the class of guardians. So uh, this uh, difference you may find here and there in different commentaries on Plato. So you should be uh, knowing that the class of rulers and auxiliaries together are guardians and the third class is the class of peasants or the producers. So the perfect guardians represents the element of reason, auxiliaries represents the element of spirit, peasants or producers represent the element of appetite. Now he comes what is the ultimate end of state. So uh, answer that he provides is ultimate good of the citizens and hopefully we all will be agree, agreeing to it that this is what the state exists for this is the whole and sole purpose of the state that to make the life of citizens good so what, what it means is ultimate good of the citizens and what is the method by which the state can lead citizens towards the ultimate good so again the answer is through the theory of education. So since there must be harmony between the ultimate end of the state in making man good, its educational methods and its social and economic organization of the state. Means 
the man or the uh, uh, the ultimate good of the man or the citizens within the state could be ensured through the instrumentality of education and it is education which can bring harmony which can establish harmony between the ultimate on end of the state that is to make man good and its educational method and its social and economic organization of the state so we find in republic it is once it retires on ethics then it retires on politics then it retires on metaphysics then it retires on education and then also it is about sociology so in tabular formulations whatever we have discussed so far could be represented like this that human mind or soul is made up of three elements reason spirit and appetite the it it corresponds to or it gives rise to three classes in state reason perfect is represented by perfect guardians spirit is present represented by auxiliaries appetite by peasants and then he has built the myth of metal theories and the myth of metal theory he explains by making this proposition that all the individuals in the state are made up of three elements that is gold silver and iron so in some translation this has also been mentioned as brass and uh, i have not written here but in some translation i have also come across the third element as copper so for uh, my purposes i will be using iron so all individuals are made up of three elements gold silver and iron and in some of us the element of gold is dominant in some of us silver is dominant in some of us iron is dominant so one who is a man of gold in he is a man of reason one who is a man of silver is a man of spirit one who is a man of iron is a man of appetite and uh, the first one reason represents rulers spirit represents soldiers appetite represents peasants so what it means that all men of gold are destined to be rulers men of silver are fit to become soldiers men of iron are fit to be peasants so this is the three partite division of or three fold division of society or state into three different classes according to plato's republic and these three classes represents three elements which exist in human uh, being and these three elements in terms of their dominance or prominence represents reason spirit and appetite so what it means is that a person in whom the gold is in prominence he is a man of reason and fit to be a ruler so he belongs to the class of guardians perfect guardians a man in whom the element of silver is in prominence is fit to is a man of spirit and is fit to be soldier and he would ultimately belong to the class of auxiliaries a man of iron who represents the element of appetite is fit to be peasants so belongs to the class of peasants or producers so this helps you to this table table helps you to understand that uh, how the three classes are related to human mind elements of human mind and elements of human uh, being and correspondingly three roles in society by three different kinds of men and three different classes now <clears throat> what are the commentary of or what are the comments of leading commentators on plato's republic and overall plato g s savain he says this analysis introduced as simply by plato into his construction of the ideal state was one of the profoundest discoveries which is social philosophy contains society is to be concerned 
as a system of services in which every member both gives and receives services so the crux of this statement is that society is made up of people who are destined to provide different kinds of services they are they, they are uh, they are providing services always as well as receiving services this is what plato has tried to enunciate for his ideal state professor arnest barker he has written social justice may be defined as the principle of a society consisting of different types of men who have combined under the impulse of their needs for one another by their combination in one society and their concentration of their separate functions have made a whole which is perfect because it is the product and the image of the whole of the human mind ideal state now once plato has uh, talked about the theory of large letters and why justice should be first located into a state to understand the notion of just individual one need to needs to understand how under what conditions in what manner justice prevails in the state so for that he starts with the origin of a state and uh, on the basis of three fold division of human mind or soul he develops his ideal state under three successive stages first stage is where state originates in the simple and mutual economic needs of individuals so what he means to say when population is less people exist through mutual economic needs by by satisfying mutual economic needs which means they produce whatever they produce they produce at subsistence level level and they exchange through barter system among themselves and they coexist but as the population grows slowly and gradually life becomes complex so from simple it becomes a luxurious state it needs military element in the state in order to defend it from outside attack so how the luxurious state has come into existence he explains in his book republic that gradually <coughs> the people they produce whatever they produce they produce more than they require and if one is producing goods x another is producing goods y they exchange among themselves and the exchange takes place in such a manner that both are able to save a part of the exchanged goods that they have acquired slowly and gradually the notion or the practice of exchanging through money comes into existence so they go on amassing wealth and this amassing of wealth leads to a luxurious state means now they are not only at the level of subsistence they are existing just for the sake of existing rather they are now existing whereby they can also uh develop the things which would provide them comfort luxury and uh, sometimes they can also use their wealth for entertainment so slowly and gradually the state becomes or the simple state transforms into a luxurious state so to protect the wealth from outside attack they now require a class of military then he says the third stage requires a ruler's class in order to rule with all the rational knowledge because as the further complexity arises within the state the state faces different kinds of conflict and chaos so to control that chaos and mitigate those conflicts now there is the need of ruler class 
which will determine what should be the pattern of exchange how the money of goods would be determined so all these things requires a rulers class so this completes the platonic concept of ideal state which means the state is the individual writ large so this he has explained through two theories theory of large letters and the myth of metals myth of myth of metals has led to three fold division of his society or state into three different classes based on the three elements of mind or soul that is reason spirit and appetite so kindly keep these divisions into class in, into your mind and uh, what is important is that how he has establishes that is state is the individual written in large letters it is by means of two theories that is theories of theory of large letters and second the myth of metal this as a student you should keep in mind thank you very much bye bye